This video will serve as an example of a solution to a boundary value problem. For variety, we will consider the mixed boundary value problem rather than the Dirichlet problem we have been considering in class. This procedure will follow directly what was outlined in class. We will then demonstrate it with a practical example of a hanging bar with one loose end. We will consider the mixed boundary value problem where one end of the boundary has a Dirichlet condition and the other has a Neumann condition. We can write this as a linear operator equation using the linear operator LM, whose domain is a subspace of functions in C2 that satisfy the given boundary conditions. This domain is what we have been calling C2M. We've seen that LM is symmetric and positive definite. Symmetric is the really important property that allows us to use the procedure that we discussed in class in order to solve this problem. Previously, we have determined that the eigenvalues of Lm will be t times 2n minus 1 squared pi squared all over 4l squared. In addition, we figured out that the eigenvectors or eigenfunctions of this problem will be sine of 2n minus 1 pi x over 2l. We're now going to consider a practical problem of a bar that is fixed at one end and the other end is hanging free. We assume that gravity is acting over the entire bar so that the f of x right hand side function will be rho times g, the density of the bar times the acceleration due to gravity. t will be the tension of the bar and we will not give that a fixed value as we will consider at the end how the stretch of the bar depends on this value of t. The first two steps to solving any boundary value problem is to prove that the operator is symmetric and then to compute the eigenpairs, and we have already done that for this problem. The next step is to compute the Fourier coefficients of the right-hand side, f of x. When doing this, we need to be sure to use the eigenvectors in the Fourier series. So the series itself will look different for each problem, since different eigenfunctions or eigenvectors will be used. Next, the values of Cn, the coefficients of the Fourier series for f of x, are computed. And again, we need to make sure that when computing the Cn values, we take the inner product of f of x with the eigenfunctions particular to the problem we are solving. So for a Dirichlet problem, the value of the Cn coefficients will be different than ones computed here, even if the right-hand side is the same for both problems. Next, we write out the unknown solution as a Fourier series. Here we have unknown coefficients, a sub n, and our goal is to find what the value of all the a sub n coefficients is. Note that we have written out u of x as a Fourier series using the eigenfunctions themselves, um, rather than, for instance, the sine n pi x over l that we had for the Dirichlet problem. Since LM is symmetric, we know we can use the formula that we computed in class multiple times, the fact that the AN coefficients will be CN divided by the eigenvalues lambda n. Putting this all together, we have the following formula for AN. It will be 16 times rho g divided by the tension t, 2n minus 1 cubed times pi cubed. These can be plugged into the above series for u of x to, to obtain a solution that we can then plot and evaluate and analyze. Here we have the final solution shown here. Of course, to actually use this solution, we must only sum up a finite number of terms. But now that we have a formula using an infinite number of terms, we have full control over how many of those terms we are going to use to represent the solution. So one question that might be of interest in this problem is how far does the tip of the bar stretch when it's in equilibrium? This is represented by the value of the function u of x given above evaluated at 1. So it's represented by u evaluated at 1. And here what we have is a plot of the value of u of 1 plotted against the tension t. So the x-axis in this plot here is the value of the tension for the particular metal. So as the tension changes, we're really considering different material types. 
This shows how the tip of the bar stretches as a function of the tension. We see that as the tension decreases, the bar is going to stretch more. So as we go to the left on the t-axis, we see that the bar is going to stretch more and more. Note that 5 times 10 to the minus 6, that's about 5 microns of stretch. So we're definitely talking about a piece of material that is not going to stretch a whole lot just due to gravity. But even more than the fact that as the tension decreases, the bar will stretch more, we note that this graph is concave up which means that as we increase our tension, the amount of stretch is going to actually decay exponentially, which is a very different form of decay than, for instance, decaying linearly or even quadratically.